Hey guys, welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial and today we're talking about five ways to use a mask. Yeah. I was initially going to make a video about 10 ways to use a mask, but instead of rushing it, I've decided to make two videos and explain it more slowly and clearly. So next week will be another video about five more ways to use a mask. Quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace for over 40,000 high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, 360 images, and a store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering, icons, illustrations, patterns, UI kits, and more. Using yellow images in your presentations to clients provides a very realistic representation of the final product. This will help you get approved much faster. Yellow Images mockups only takes minutes to make a real life looking presentation that will certainly wow the client. The mockups come in high resolution with great lighting, shadows, and texture that provides a very realistic feel. So if you're interested, discounts and more information in the description. Also, if you're an illustrator, you can sell your work on there as well. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. Mask number one, and that's the wipe mask. So for the first mask, I'm going to go slowly and clearly on exactly how to make a mask. If you're already familiar on the masking process and you're just looking for ideas and new creative ways to implement masks in your video, then skip forward to the time I have written here on the screen. So here we go, wipe masks, a very common use in many videos we'll see. Just pass the camera by something vertical like a pole or a tree and it will give this effect. In our timeline, we select the clip we want to use, hit P and raise the clip above the timeline. Frame by frame, we want to use the arrow keys to go to the exact frame where the mask begins. And in that same position, we drag the clip that will appear underneath that clip. So here we go. We click on FX, type in draw, grab draw mask, drag it on the top clip, then set our canvas size to 50% and it will ask to set our control points. We only need four control points for a simple mask like this. Then we're going to invert our masks so we can see what's underneath. Click the control points keyframes and now frame by frame, we're going to right arrow over, drag over the mask. Sometimes we can skip two frames ahead if it's a simple and clean mask like this. If we want exact precision, then you should only go frame by frame, but here it's a pretty fast and clean transition or clean mask so we can skip two frames ahead. So just going frame by frame, we're adjusting the mask as we see fit. All right, let's take a look at what the final product looks like. Let's try that again with our second one. So we're going to go to the place where we first want the mask to appear, click P, drag our clip above the timeline, drag the under clip to that same spot, drag the draw mask effect on our top clip. It's going to ask for our control points, set those, invert the mask, hit the control points keyframe. Since the broomstick here is blurry, you want to use the feather to make a soft edge. And it looks much better now. Okay, frame by frame, we'll finish off our mask. And it looks great. Here's one more mask we're going to put in, which will reveal the city view. And then in this next mask, we have a person walking on the street that actually walks in front of the lens. And this is a bit more complicated. We have to use many more control points. However, it's the same process. We drag the clip above the timeline. Where we want the mask to begin, we drag the clip underneath that we were revealing to that same spot. Begin setting our control points but we're going to set a lot of control points here. And I'm going to put it in fast forward and all the same steps apply. If you want to select multiple keyframes at a time or control points at a time, you just hold shift and you can select them all and move them all together like that. Right click, hit smooth. If you're at an area where you don't want such a rigid line, you can have a more curved keyframe line. But again, frame by frame, we're just adjusting all of the control points so that it looks natural. Okay, let's see what the final product looks like. Mask number two, spot adjustments. This is a very simple mask, but we're going to copy and paste the same clip twice, drag it on top of each other. And on the top one, we're gonna type in shape mask and drag that effect on top of our top clip. So if we click the little film strip here, you'll see here's the shape mask. I'm just gonna adjust that down to right over top of our canvas for this particular shot. Drag out the feather, nice and wide. 
and we're basically masking to the exact same clip on the bottom. So if we hit V, it'll eliminate that bottom clip if we can see what we're looking at. So I want to sharpen the actual painting. So I'm going to click on effects, type in sharpen, select it on our top clip. And here's what the effect does. It basically contrasts the mid-tones. So if I blast it way up, it kind of looks bad. But if I use just a little bit the default I like, 2.5, click here on the color palette, add some saturation to the master. And on the bottom clip, I want to bring the shadows down. Also, let's select the color curves and just fade that a little bit by bringing our curve up. And that's really now drawing our eye towards the painting. I also want to add a bit more blur effect. So if we just clear that selection and grab the Gaussian blur, drop it on the bottom. The default setting is too intense. So let's hit the film strip and just bring the amount of the blur quite down. So it's just very subtle. And as there we go, we toggle the effect on and off and you can see it's really drawing your eye towards the painting. Mask number three, and this is an open mask. So we want to open something up like a book or a door and we reveal a new clip underneath it. So same thing applies. Hit P, drag the clip above the timeline, find out where we want to begin our mask. Hit M to hit a marker, drag that clip underneath to that exact spot. And this is the clip we want to reveal to. So let's begin our mask. So as usual, we drag the draw mask clip on the top clip. And sometimes I like to do a hard cut right in the clip there since we're beginning the mask right on the clip and not off to the side. But everything else is the same as usual. We just invert our mask, hit the control points keyframe, and then frame by frame, we just keep aligning it with the edge. You'll notice it looks a bit wonky because I was skipping frames and I wasn't going frame by frame. Let's do this again here with a book. And we're going to push through the book into the under clip. So as per usual, we select our control points, invert the mask, hit the control points keyframe, go frame by frame adjusting, now to push through, we hit the top clip, hit the transform button, select that keyframe, and then go to the last frame. Here we scale the clip all the ways to make the book disappear. Now we're gonna have to make our canvas size smaller in order to make the book fully disappear. So let's adjust our view and then make it all the way off the screen. And then one final effect to make it look more authentic, select all the clips, new compound clip, and then add a handheld effect on top of that compound clip and here we go it actually looks like we're reading the book and then we push through to our scene next up we have cinemagraphs cinemagraphs are a magical hybrid of photo and video they contain a subtle motion that plays in a short never-ending loop so this effect really works best with tripod shots so once we found the clip we want to use find the section we want to freeze go edit add freeze frame there's a section delete that initial clip pull that freeze frame on top of the original clip Lengthen that to match the clip underneath. And then now we are going to add our mask. So just the usual masking procedure here, except for it's only one frame since it's a freeze frame. So when there's no movement involved. So once we're finished that we can adjust the feather to our liking. And then let's see what it looks like. Now you'll notice here the clip underneath starts to move. So the way we can fix that is by stabilizing the bottom clip. And then once that renders out, hit tripod mode and that will lock it. Then go to the top clip, what we've masked off, hit transform tool and let's make it a bit bigger so it covers the movement below. And there we go. We've masked off the frozen part of the clip. Looks pretty cool. Now in this clip, we're going to mask off the moving area instead of masking off the person. So the difference between this one and the last one is we're going to loop the bottom clip because our hand covers the fire there. So we want to cut it just before that happens. And now we'll add the shape mask to our top clip. And we're going to adjust the size and the length. We want to catch the fire fumes above. So I'll have it nice and long, invert the mask, and then copy and paste the bottom clip so the fire keeps replaying. And then in between those, we'll just drop a cross dissolve to make it look nice and smooth. All right, here is the final effect. All right, let's put something on here. Ready? Just that easy. There we go, that's a simple use of a green screen. Kind of a cool effect and you can apply it pretty much to anything if you have a green piece of paper or if it's a screen that you can just turn green. All right, so the last one we're covering today is green screens. And while it's not technically a mask, the effect often comes off as much cleaner than a mask. 
So just like masking, drag the top clip over top of the bottom one we want to see. And then what we're going to do is bring down the opacity of the top clip so we can see the bottom clip. And we're just going to hit the transform and make that smaller and line it up with the screen. Now we're going to hit the keyframe button and go frame by frame and just make sure that the bottom clip is somewhat aligned with the green screen. And now just bring the opacity back up to 100%. And from the effects panel, just drop the key on the top clip. And there we go. Now you can have your video playing on top of any surface or screen. And I think it looks even better than a mask does. All right, that's it for today's video. I really hope you learned something. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the upcoming videos. We'll see you next week for five more ways to use a mask.